It has been said that the heart is the center of the body, that it might also be the core of a subtle universe or perhaps a subtle sun generated by every individual. The heart, for instance, serves as the human electrical center. Its electrical activity shapes the formation of the biofields that surround the body because it emits thousands of times more electricity and magnetism than do the other organs. The heart is the physical center of the circulatory system, managing over 75 trillion cells. It is also the electromagnetic center of the body, emanating thousands of times more electricity and magnetism than does the brain. Even more impressively, it is an organ of communication that can potentially manage the body's intuitive processes. The heart's electromagnetic field is 5,000 times stronger than that of the brain. Its electrical field is 60 times greater than that of the brain. Not only is its electromagnetic capacity greater than that of the brain, but it is organically capable of performing certain brain-like functions. In fact, 60 and 65 percent of its cells are neural, identical, identical to those present in the brain. Electricity flows constantly between the heart and the brain, assisting with emotional processing, sensory experiences, memory, and derivation of meaning from events and reasoning. In addition, the heart is one of the body's major endocrine glands, producing at least five major hormones, and they impact the physiological functions of the brain and body. This heart has, the heart has long been known as the center of the body as well as the home of the soul. Under the current conditions, such as when a person consciously centers or focuses in the heart, the heart begins to run the brain. Most typically, the brain runs the body. This is referred to as being centered in one's heart chakra, where one feels intense and recurrent emotional sensations of a perpetual flow of euphoristic reciprocal loving and interconnectedness which can last for a lifetime. The management of the body through the heart rather than the brain leads to higher functioning mental and emotional states as well as a healthier body. This heart healing power is possible because of the electric nature of the body. All electricity contains information and all cells are electric. The closer a group of cells, the more likely they are to oscillate or vibrate in a coordinated frequency thereby producing a more powerful and intense signal. Heart cells are tightly organized, thus gener generating an extremely strong shared frequency, which is both electrical and magnetic. The heart's internal signal is stronger than any produced by other parts of the body because it is more intense, explained by researcher Stephen Herod Bunner in his book, The Secret Teachings of Plants. Highly synchronized cells, such as those compactly organized in the heart, are able to use background noise to increase the amplitude of an incoming signal. If they are interested in perceiving it, the heart will hear what it is programmed to hear. If love resides in the heart, it will attune to love. If fear, greed, or envy resides within, the heart will access negativity. Most people believe that the brain initiates the first response to incoming events and then orders our reactions. Analysis reveals, however, that incoming information first impacts the heart and through the heart, the brain, and then the rest of the body. Our hearts are, are so strong that they can actually formulate the most well-known symbol of love, light. Research has shown that under certain conditions, a meditator can actually generate visible light from the heart. The meditation technique must be heart-centered, not mental. This occurred during studies at the University of Kassel in Germany in 1997. The experiment was monitored by Dr. Winfred Buschobin. The meditator was Puran Baer, co-founder of the Institute for Applied Meditation. The meditator Puran began a series of meditations designed to increase energy in the spine and heart and radiate light. These meditations included kundalini practices and invocations of divine light. In these meditations, energy is drawn up from the spine from the earth by using a strong inhalation with that visualization. Then the breath is held with the tension placed above the crown. The exhalation is full and complete, forcing energy down the spine and then forward from the heart. The practice is extremely energetic, resulting in a feeling of ecstasy and radiance. The initial results resulted in some brief and erratic measurements of 37,000 to 45,000 photons a second while the meditator was meditating. The results of these meditation practices did not create the desired results. Early the next morning, the meditator awoke with an intense insight. Dr. Winfred's young son had come down with a severe cold, and Puran, the meditator, had a eureka moment that the young child needed life for healing. The meditator did a healing meditation in which he mentally placed the sick boy in front of himself and sent light to the boy on the exhalation coming from his heart. This is a technique of heart rhythm meditation. 
The effort required by the meditator was emotional rather than mental, and very minor in comparison to the previous trials of intense concentration. The computer measured 100,000 photons a second consistently for half an hour, whereas the background had a count of only 20 photons per second. This would be enough light to be barely visible. Light generation was eventually achieved by the combination of effective meditation technique and the intention of sending light to a specific patient in need of healing. The meditation technique used is called heart rhythm meditation and is detailed in the book Living from the Heart, authored by the meditator. Without healing intention, in spite of his best efforts using a variety of meditations he had mastered, the meditator was not able to generate consistent light emissions. The amount of light emitted from the meditator's chest and reaching a photomultiplier directly in front three feet away was two orders of mag magnitude greater than what is required for visibility and one order of magnitude less than what is required for reading with dark adjusted eyes. It seems that a known specific receiver subject is necessary to empower the transmitter subject. We have to be aware of what is keeping our heart closed and what emotional memories are unhealed. Grief is the bondage of the heart. In order to open your heart, you have to be aware of what is causing you grief, so it requires that one must be open with their emotions and feelings, and not to suppress your emotions. And one, and to practice living from the heart, speaking from the heart, living without fear, without grief, and to be brave.